Hi, this is Jane, a part of Home Cooking. I'm so glad that you've come into my kitchen. Today we're going to talk about Texas love and my mom's favorite meatloaf. She's not with me anymore. She's up in heaven, but she's with me in my heart, and I want to share her heart with you as well as my own. We're going to have fresh green beans and crunchy new potatoes and banana pudding. Stick around and come back and taste it with me. This is going to be all about Texas love, and I want you to feel loved today. I want your soul to be comforted with this food, and, and I hope you feel the love coming through into your home and as you cook this food, knowing that you are loved and you're appreciated. If you cook from the heart, I guarantee you that your food is going to be good. Welcome back to Heart of Home Cooking with Jane. And I want to tell you a little bit about what Heart of Home Cooking is all about. Heart, I spell it H-E-A-R-T, not H-A-R-T, and that is for it comes from the heart. If you cook from the heart, I guarantee you that your food is going to be good. Now today I'm going to be fixing my mother's meatloaf, green beans, fresh green beans, and crusty potatoes. And uh, I'm going to have a pound and a half of meat to fix. And mom was worked 10 hours a day at Hager Slacks in Corsicana, Texas. That's where I'm from. Though I have spent some time in Georgia, so I have a twang and a draw. And hopefully you can understand me and not get a little irritated with that accent because I've tried to change it and it just doesn't work. But she would make this for us even after she worked a long 10-hour day. And it's really special to me. She is in heaven now. And I love to fix this for those that I love, including myself. And you need to love yourself, by the way. And uh, it just brings back those memories of her loving arms around about me and uh, just loving on her family, on her four daughters, by cooking us this special meatloaf. Now, there's many recipes out there. This is Edna's homemade meatloaf. Now, we're going to start with uh, hamburger meat, about a half and a, a pound and a half. And then we've got an egg here. I'm going to go ahead and break the egg in. Now, be sure you don't get any shells in it. And then I'm going to go ahead and do some crackers. In a few minutes, I'm going to cut up the onions. Now, I do saltine. I do about a half a sleeve of crackers. You might want less. You might want more. Do it for your taste. Uh, I always like people to take these recipes and make them their own. I think that's very special uh, when you make it your own. I wish you were here with me. We'd be having a lot of fun together. Okay, now I like to grind them out really good, and I put salt and pepper, that's pepper, and I put garlic granulated powder, and I put seasoning salt. Kind of got ahead of myself, didn't I? Okay, now we're going to take an onion. I'm not a chef, I'm a home cook, though I am studying how to use the knife properly. I'm going to cut it in half, that's what I like to do. Be sure to keep your fingers out of the way. We don't want any blood in this meatloaf except for the cows. And it's going to be cooked, so it won't be there, right? Let me get this out of the way. Okay. Now, I like to slice them in rings, and then, because I like my onions small, I don't want to take a bite of meatloaf and have a large piece. Though I like onion. Now, there are some uh, network uh, cooking schools that even as a home cook you can go on and you can learn about chopping. Okay. A little bit more. We'll be through in just a second. Yeah, Mom wouldn't let me cook. Us girls, she always wanted to do the cooking, so until I got married, I married at 15 the first time. Wow, wasn't that young? And the first thing I ever cooked was cube steak frozen, and my, my, did I ever burn it. So be sure you kind of read up on some recipes before you cook frozen cube steaks so you don't make the same mistake I did. Back then, I sure wasn't a cook, but I learned how to cook later after I got some people to love on with my food. Okay, we're going to put this in here. 
in the meat. And then we're going to put a half a can of tomato paste. And we leave the rest of this for the topping that we're going to make later. I'm going to do half the can. Now, you know, I want to put love in everything I do. So, you know, you when people hug you, uh, if they really want to hug you, you feel a lot of love coming out. So when I do food, to me, when I touch it, I'm putting love in it. So that's what I'm doing. I'm squeezing it. I'm going to put some love in it. Now, you know, that egg is a binder. And the cracker, salting crackers are there to expand the meat love to feed a little bit more people. Now, some people like breadcrumbs. You know, there's a lot of recipes out there for meatloaf. They even put bell pepper. Uh, I've even read jalapeno pepper. But you want it to taste like my mama's, then you'd follow these directions. Okay, I think that's good enough. Ooh, that does get messy, but that's okay. I did it all for you because I want you to know how much I love you already as my viewer. Okay, we'll put this over to the side and we'll bring this over and we're just going to, I think we've got about a pound and a half here. Now usually I do it in a loaf, but I've got a little bit more meat. You know what, I think I'm just going to hold on to the rest of that meat and I'm going to make some meatballs out of it. You can do that with this recipe too. Okay. Now I put foil on mine and I cook it at 350 for about 20 minutes and for 20 minutes and then I take it out and I put the top put the sauce back on it and uh, when we come back we'll talk to you about how to do the sauce with the drippings and mm, mm good and oh it's already smelling I just put it in there and I can smell it already okay well God bless you and look forward to seeing you in a few minutes Like many of you, Jane Nasrallah has experienced many of life's difficult challenges. In 2007, Jane had a prophetic vision from the Lord. She saw herself cooking her favorite recipes and sharing her miraculous testimonies with the world. She knew that cooking would be a way to share the heart of the Father and touch many lives the way the Lord has touched hers. Now, you can bring that same warmth into your home with Jane and Heart of Home Cooking. Jane has cooked for her family and friends all of her life, and now she wants to bring the love and healing to you and your family. For more information on how you can bring Heart of Home Cooking to your next event or church function, visit www.heartofhomecooking.com. You can find updates, recipes, and cooking products. Send prayer requests or give personal feedback about Jane's recipes. Join Jane at heartofhomecooking.com. We want to hear from you. Welcome back, and we're going to be doing some fresh green beans right out of the garden. But I want to first tell you a little bit about my mother. My mom loved having gardens and also doing canning, and they were so delicious. Now, she used uh, bacon fat or dry salt, but I don't. I use olive oil and some butter, and we'll get to that later. Uh, but they were so good with meatloaf. You know, it makes a difference in how you combine your food. Uh, macaroni and cheese goes with meatloaf, but that's a starch. But these are green beans and some crusty potatoes, and uh, they really taste really well. Oh, just a minute. I got my uh, potatoes going, so I'm going to turn them down a little bit. They're just boiling. Now here is a bowl of green beans I've already snapped, but I'm going to snap some for you. Some people don't know how to snap them. You take the end, and uh, these don't have strings on them very much, but a lot of your green beans do, and you just snap them, and you just put them in there, and you snap, 
and you snap. Now what I like to do is I like to snap them in half to make them smaller. And there's some in here that are already like that, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I've got a couple of more I'm going to do. I like things to cook fast and tasty. I don't know about you, but I think that the sooner we can eat, the better it is. So I'm going to put it in a pot over here. Okay, and I'll just set this out of the way. And then I am going to put some pepper and a little bit of seasoning salt. I like seasoning salt. You know, you just use regular salt there. That's probably about an eighth of a teaspoon of both. And then I do some, pour my water in it. And you just slightly, I don't even like to cover it uh, completely myself. And then I put some olive oil, probably about, oh, I'd say, I like a tablespoon and a half. Now we're going to get this, these babies going. I remember going out and uh, picking those beans. We tried to do them early in the morning and for the hot Texas sun, because it does get hot in Texas, and uh, before the sweat begins, you know. And so we would go out there and mom would fix some sandwiches and we would just take a little picnic after we got picking the corns and the green beans and even those potatoes. I love to dig potatoes. The Texas soil is so rich. And uh, those potatoes, you start planting them about uh, February and then you can start getting them out about late March, early April. April, And then you've got your green beans and you've got your fresh tomatoes. And another thing that's really great with this dish I'm not going to fix today is cantaloupe. That's another a good memory I have of my mom when she would put this meal on the table for us. Now what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to do the new potatoes. We're going to do crunchy potatoes. And I've got some potatoes here show you already cut up now I'm just cooking for about two people so just double this recipe uh, if you want to cook for four over or six people uh, let me see I've got my be sure you don't pick this top up I just put it right there I'm going to get my pan here oops quite big I got a little bit too big of a pan here it looks like now I'm going to take olive oil and then I'm going to put it on the pan. Now again, I don't use bacon. I use olive oil and I think that's so much better. And you just take the potatoes and you put them in the pan. Mm, they look so good. Oh man, just smelling this really reminds me of Mother. She was such a loving woman. Everybody loved Miss Edna. Her name was Miss Edna. And she had a cafe out in Cayuga, Texas. And it was called Edna's Cafe. And the truck drivers and the oil field workers back in the 70s uh, loved to come and said, Miss Edna, won't you? That was some pepper and garlic powder, by the way, and my seasoning salt. These are the three main ingredients I have. And then since this is so hot, I'm not going to toss it with my loving hands like I normally would. It's, <laughs> I would be going, whoops. Okay, now we're going to put this in the oven. And it's at 500. Um, let me see, yes. Get the meatloaf in that one. And we're going to let those get crunchy. Now the next thing we're going to do, we're going to get this water out of the way. Got these beans going up. Well, I think... We just let those go on their own. Okay, let me get a pot here. And we're going to, we're going to make the topping for the um, meatloaf. Oh, I put my drippings in it. I'm so sorry. You put your drippings. This is drippings from the meatloaf, okay? This is what makes it so good. And you dump all that in there. And then you're going to put the seasoning again. I have everything, but I just love to season stuff. And then you're going to whip this up and you're going to get it brown. And then you're going to put this on top of the meatloaf. 
Oh, that smells delicious. Now, for those of you who don't want the oil, uh, you, you know, you can just leave it out and just brown it up. Okay. Well, you know, these are great memories of my mom and my family and my uncles and aunts that come together. And these meals aren't very expensive. You know, they are uh, very uh, good. And you can go to the grocery store, pick up a bag of green beans and new potatoes and, and get you a pound, or a pound and a half of hamburger made, according if you're feeding four, four people or, or two, and fix this and really enjoy it. Well, you come back, and I'm going to fix you some a really good banana pudding. Like many of you, Jane Nasrallah has experienced many of life's difficult challenges. In 2007, Jane had a prophetic vision from the Lord. She saw herself cooking her favorite recipes and sharing her miraculous testimonies with the world. She knew that cooking would be a way to share the heart of the Father and touch many lives the way the Lord has touched hers. Now, you can bring that same warmth into your home with Jane and Heart of Home Cooking. Jane has cooked for her family and friends all of her life, and now she wants to bring the love and healing to you and your family. For more information on how you can bring Heart of Home Cooking to your next event or church function, visit www.heartofhomecooking.com. You can find updates, recipes, and cooking products. Send prayer requests or give personal feedback about Jane's recipes. Join Jane at heartofhomecooking.com. We want to hear from you. Welcome back to Heart of Home Cooking. Now, I'm a, going to fix you a banana pudding. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to fix the banana pudding. We say fixing in Texas. That's a special language we have. People always ask me when I go overseas, where are you from? I say Texas. They said, not the United States. I said, no, it's Texas. And they said, what language do you speak? I say Texan. And so fixing is a part of that. And we even roll the window down. You know, and uh, no, we raise the window down. Excuse me. Yes, you do roll it down, but we go raise the window down. How do you raise the window down? I have no idea, but that's just the way we talk. So hey, there you go. Now I'm going to fix you banana pudding today, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about my baby girl, Dana. Uh, Dana loved baby. Uh, Dana loved baby. Yeah, Dana loved uh, banana pudding. But Dana also is in heaven with my mother. And whenever I fix banana pudding, I always think of my pumpkin, of my baby girl, and she could eat the whole thing all by herself. And it's a very simple recipe I'm going to use today. I'm going to use a mix instead of putting it all together. You can go on the website at heartofhomecooking.com and you can find the recipe to do it from scratch if you desire. But this is really an easy recipe. So we're going to start with the vanilla flavor Oh my goodness, vanilla cookies. Yes, that's what it is. And they do have vanilla flavoring in them, by the way. And we're going to just pile them and put them in here. You're going to put them close together. Do you ever have those tongue twisting days? I have them quite often. They call them senior moments, but I don't like to say that about myself. In fact, I'm not getting senior Social Security yet, so I don't feel like one. And I also don't get senior prices when I go out and eat. So. I think that I am not a senior yet, but I do have those moments where I forget to, what I'm saying or people's names. You ever feel that way? But we call Dana Pumpkin. I just love to call her Pumpkin. She was so precious, beautiful black hair, uh, green eyes, just a gorgeous girl. And I do miss her, but I know she's in heaven with Jesus. I'm not for sure who you believe in, but that's who I believe in. And uh, I'm going to see her one day. Okay, I've already got some of the van vanilla cookies inside of vanilla wafers. You can find them at the, door at the store. There are uh, many different brands that you can use. Okay, I'm going to pour in three cups. Let me see which one I want to use. I want to use this one. I have three cups of milk, and you just pour it in. I'm splashing it all over the place. Pour it in slow. Oh, wow. Let me see if I can do it another way. That's messy. My husband always gets upset with me. He said, you are such a messy cook. I said, messy cooks are good cooks. 
And leave my mess alone, I'll clean it up when I get through. We're going to turn this to medium. And we want it to start boiling, but you want to, you know, make sure you keep an eye on it. And it's close by. So I'm going to just take this as kind of rubber here so I don't want it to melt. And then we're going to take a banana and we're going to slice it. Now I have another daughter, but she's a spiritual daughter, and her name is Joanna, and they call her Joe Banana. And why do they do that? Because this girl loves bananas. Now I just put it off in the pan, here are the bananas, and then I'll place them. You know, I try to make things as easy as possible for those that I'm teaching to cook and for myself. And so uh, you just place them on top. And I use a shallow pan because the shallow pan is, um, is I think, better because it keeps the, ban the, the bananas and the cookies kind of crunchy. Because if you do it for too long, we're going to just throw some. Uh-oh, I am. I'm throwing on. You know, some people are just real picky about putting them in line, but not me. Let me see. Okay, here we go. All right, we're waiting for this pudding to get done. Let me put it even up on. It's not, it's not boiling yet, so it needs to boil. Another banana. Oh, these taste. Really, ripe bananas are best, but you know, I think it's the season for bananas because they're kind of uh, green. But this is going to be good anyway. It's going to be delicious. And this can go a long way. You can fix really a big um, uh, dish of this and feed quite a bit of people with it. And everybody likes bananas. Wow, I think this is really getting ready. So while this is still cooking a little bit more, we're going to put a few more cookies on here. And I think that we ought to do one more banana because it's just got a, just I probably about two more minutes. So this is a favorite of my baby girl, Dana. And she was just so precious. And she just would always say, Mama, will you fix me some banana pudding? And I said, OK, baby, I'll do that. You go out and you get the bananas for me. And I normally would do this with, um, I would mix it homemade again. But I think for you that right now that you might just like a mix. And I do not get instant. I always do the cooking. That's why it's taking a little bit. It's better to have the, the cook. Um, the cooking pudding off the shelf, but don't get the instant because it is really yucky. So we don't want any yucky pudding. We want you to eat it, right? And then what I do when this cools off, I'm going to go ahead and take it, pour it. What I do when this, when this cools off, you can put uh, cellophane on it, plastic wrap, and put it in the refrigerator. But know that the bananas will turn a little bit of brown. Okay, well, there we go. That's Dana's. Banana food. Like many of you, Jane Nasrallah has experienced many of life's difficult challenges. In 2007, Jane had a prophetic vision from the Lord. She saw herself cooking her favorite recipes and sharing her miraculous testimonies with the world. She knew that cooking would be a way to share the heart of the Father and touch many lives the way the Lord has touched hers. Now, you can bring that same warmth into your home with Jane and Heart of Home Cooking. Jane has cooked for her family and friends all of her life and now she wants to bring the love and healing to you and your family. For more information on how you can bring Heart of Home Cooking to your next event or church function, visit www.heartofhomecooking.com. You can find updates, recipes, and cooking products. Send prayer requests or give personal feedback about Jane's recipes. Join Jane at heartofhomecooking.com. We want to hear from you. What we have
have in front of us is Texas Love. And it so reminds me of my mom's table. I could just call her up and say, Mom, we're coming in from out of town, and we're so hungry. And she said, well, i tell you what, baby, I can fix you a meatloaf and some fresh green beans I just got out of the garden and new potatoes I dug up. And I said, Mom, that sounds so great. So today, that's what I fixed you. I have fixed you Mama's Edna's meatloaf. And it's so scrumptious and smells so good. And also green beans, fresh green beans. Now I got that out of the grocery store, but I have had my own garden and it's really awesome and tasteful when you can do that. You can use frozen or canned, but it's not the same. And remember, I do olive oil. And also we got some new potatoes over here. Tossed them in some olive oil, put seasoning salt, garlic, pepper, crusted them up. Now, I pair boiled them. That means that they were just uh, al dente or they're just a little firm whenever they go into the oven. And you put it under a broiler. Just watch it so it doesn't burn. And then we have over here banana pudding, which reminds me of my baby Dana. Uh, she left this earth when she was 29 years old, and now she's in heaven, and I'm looking forward to seeing her one day. She's up there with her other sister and her grandma and grandpa, uh, but every time we have banana pudding, we think of Dana, and we talk about her, and, and we just enjoy that time together. So I'm going to take a bite of this. Mm. It looks so good. I've had a just a hard time not picking it with my fingers. You ever done that? Just want to pick it up? Well, let's Texas gals eat with our fingers sometimes. Mmm. Oh, wow. Mmm. Those potatoes. Mmm. All that together is delicious. And right, let me get me some banana pudding real quick. Now, I'm not going to eat much. There's a lot of sugar in it. And I'll use a little bit of dollop of cream on the side. Wow. This goes to you, Dana. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. Delicious. For recipes, you can go to heartofhomecooking.com and you can find these recipes on there. And you can find some stories too that you can read and enjoy with your family. Until the next time, bye bye.